Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're going to be taking a look at Summit Gaming, but specifically I'm going to look at the build of all five of the players, the item build. And then as I look at it, I'm going to look at it from the context of a team fight and I'm going to show you like why they buy the items that they do. Why do they go these builds? How do they use it in the team fight? How do they make these items look good? And just in general, talk about what these items do. So if you're excited for that and you feel like you just don't really understand item builds enough, smash the like button, subscribe. You can also comment down below. Let me know if you want to see more of this and let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like actually you want to become much, much better at Dota and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank and I'll see you there. So first off, we got the Visage. So getting into this team fight, really his job is to try to backline the supports. I really like the build that he goes. I think not going an early Wraith Pack is kind of a grief because I think that item is unbelievably broken. But why go Ags this game? Why go something like Ags Drums, right? Or Ags Flies and skip the Wraith Pack? The reason why he can do that this game is there is a Rubik and a Grim. There are two heroes that you can kill from full. Even Medusa is in a horrible matchup until Dusa gets Scotty, which she has now. So I like what he's going to look to do. He's going to try to axe and get around onto the back line. He finds the Grim and the Rubik, who are unbelievably out of position here. I have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> but he finds them, right? instantly takes the Grim out of the team fight, gets gone on. But honestly, that's a good team fight from a Visage. You go in, you take out a support, and you buy so much time for your team that it enables them to pop off. And that's what this hero does right now, especially when you go something like Axe. I don't recommend going Axe if their supports are like something like Winter Wyvern and um, maybe a Tusk that can buy a lot of time. Going something like an early Axe is not a good idea because you're just going to go on them, waste your time, and then have a 4.2k useless gold item. Getting into the puck, honestly, his build's a little bit weird this game. I can't tell you exactly why he buys Yules instead of something like Lincolns. I, I think he probably doesn't go Lincolns this game because they have a Rubik, right? Rubik is one of the hardest Lincolns counters in the game. And the reason why is Fade Bolt into Lift is almost an instant disable even against Lincolns from a very far cast range. So he decides to go for an Aether Lens this game. I think the reason why he goes the build that he does is he feels like he's probably the hard initiator. Now that might seem weird because he has a Doom, but Honestly, Doom doesn't want to go in first. Doom needs vision of a target, right? Doom needs to make sure when he's jumping, it's clean. If he doesn't get off a good Doom as a position four against something like a CK, he can get one shot or, you know, is stunned and die. And so he has to be very careful. So I think the reason why he goes either this game is it's nice for wave clear. It lets him get onto the back line. And I think in general, it kind of just allows him to be the initiator that he wants to be. Am I a huge fan of this? I mean, I think the Octarine is not a horrible idea this game. I do think that the AoE Silence is very valuable. They have a lot of heroes that won't buy Dispels, so especially when he gets to level 20 and inevitably gets the Waning Rift cooldown, uh, his Silence will be really valuable this game. And so I do see some value there, right? Storm is going to only have a BKB most likely. The CK is never going to have a Dispel at all. Deuce only has Manta and Silencing her is actually really good. This guy actually bought a Yules, funny enough, but with the low cooldown on Waning Rift with Octarine, it's pretty nuts what it goes down to. Right now, right, the Silence is a 7 second cooldown. With Octarine, you're bringing it down to around 5.5, which is going to make it almost permanent uptime, right? 3.5 and a 5.5 second cooldown is really tough to play against. Next up from the Wyvern, we have a very nice item build here. I also want to talk about the neutral item. I think this is pretty key here. He goes for a Glimmer Cape Rush. Most games? a little bit suspect i'm not gonna lie most games you know i think it's a bit weird but i will say this game i like it specifically for the storm matchup i don't know how i feel about this winter's curse but um this game i really like it for the storm matchup the reason why i like it for the storm matchup is if you get jumped and you have a blink or an aether you die you'll die he'll solo kill you most likely especially if the storm goes orchid which he did and as a result the wyvern has to be very very careful. Makes sense, right? He has to be particularly defensive. Now, you might be thinking, oh, doesn't the storm just buy dust? 
Well, yeah, but then you click Glimmer, and the Storm is mostly magical damage. There's some physical built into that, but Storm is largely magical damage. It allows you to live through the burst, and especially if you Glimmer Cold Embrace, the Storm is going to burn the majority of his mana pool trying to kill you, if not all of it, and especially that's why the People's Gift is important. This item, honestly, is pretty ridiculous. Getting it 17 minutes into the game, 300 HP on a support, you can also have a wand raindrop. This game, he didn't go for that for whatever reason. Guess he just wants to complete this Glimmer Cape ASAP. You can become really survivable, so I like that. And you can see he's going to play the outside of the fight. I wouldn't say it's like an insane Glimmer game in damage reduction regard. It's not really reducing da uh, Medusa's damage or CK's damage, but it's mostly just for the Storm matchup. Storm is going to hunt the Wyvern this game because it's a really good Wyvern game, right? The curse against CK and Medusa is just going to make it really hard for them to play. The Cold Embrace is nasty as well. So I like this Glimmer Cape defensive build. From Doom, he goes for a Blink BKB. Pretty simple to understand. You want to initiate, uh, you, you buy Fagernade or you take Fagernade if you need to pop Lincolns. I believe it still pops, still pops Lincolns, right? This one I always forget. Either way, very easy to understand build here. You just go in and Doom someone. <laughs> like, there's nothing to say. It's just, it's just Blink BKB. I'm not gonna make it more complex than that. I don't think this is a matchup thing. I mean, you could argue like, oh, he could have went like phase drums or something like that, but he probably just didn't have that much space. And Dooming Dusa is very important because if she doesn't get off Stone Gaze or Manta, she honestly just isn't that strong. And finally, last but not least, is the Troll Warlord. He went for BKB in the Sanjin Yasha, which I honestly think is a bit of a suspect build. The only reason why sometimes I feel that way is I kind of feel like you can get kited even with status resist and BKB, so I kind of like um, an earlier basher. I'm sorry, what I meant to say is he went Battle Fury into Sanjin Yasha instead of the BKB. And I feel like sometimes you can get kited anyway. So I don't know if I love it, right? I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of that build, but either way, I do understand why he would want a Sanjin Yasha. Um, basically, the reason why I think his build is like pretty reasonable is primarily because the enemy team has a lot, and I mean a lot of hard stuns. Inkswell, Telekinesis, Stone Gaze, Storm Pole, Sea Cable. It's one of those games where your BKB is going to run out, and if you don't have a Sanjin Yasha, you're never going to move, right? So I do understand that, and I think to some extent as well, he does feel like maybe running in is a good idea. Wyvern and Visage and Puck are going to pump out damage as long as he stays alive, and he's going to be their tank this game, right? As much as Visage is also a tank, I think frontlining this game is very reasonable. It's also pretty hard for him to just insta-kill a target with Basher. For instance, if he goes on Dusa and he goes Basher this game, I don't think he's just gonna like kill her from full, right? She's gonna get off Stone Gaze and get off her Manta, and you're not- you're just not gonna burst her, right? So you're much better off having a sustained base build against a hard carry that you need to sustain against, right? This Medusa, you need to stay alive and kind of just slowly kill her with Fervor, right? That's your attack speed passive. So I definitely like this item build here. I think it absolutely makes a lot of sense. He does eventually end up going back for the Basher, as we'll see here. Obviously, against something like Storm and Dusa, it's still good to bash them. Right at the end of the day, it's solid, but hopefully it makes sense why he went the build that he went. Now, you might be thinking, oh, why go Sanjin Yasha and BKB? It's because you need BKB. How can you play without BKB? You can't. Please don't think, oh, I have a Sanjin Yasha. I don't have to go BKB or, oh, I bought a Lincoln's. It means I can't buy BKB. Either way, nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.